Hey everyone, Tony here from BikeBerry. Today what we're gonna talk about is making the F-Zero motor ready, okay? Uh, really what that means, even if you're just buying it as a bicycle, these are the things that you need to tend to, except for maybe one, <laughs> uh, to make it you know, ready in a, in a performer, okay? And to make sure that it's gonna work consistently all the time. So I got it together, you saw, I've been riding around getting an engine ready, which is in the mail, and we'll be kicking off all that content pretty soon. I'll get it installed in the bike. Um, but because this is not a plug and play hobby, there's a lot of tinkering involved. You know, you get parts in, you gotta adapt it to your bike and everything. Uh, even a new bike is that way. It's not gonna be, you know, perfect out of the box, as they say. Uh, even though most of it's put together and they did a fantastic job, there's going to be a couple of tweaks. And so what I want to do is run through those tweaks today. And let's just start with the chain because uh, they got the chain tension right on this one. But I noticed it was a little out of line. And when I wrote it, then I experienced it coming off and everything. So let me show you what I did. So if you look at it, it has this inner mounting bracket part. These are a widened uh, crank set. So you can see that they're not up against this, you know, this inner part of the frame. They give a little space so that we have space for your, for your engine and everything, right? Uh, but this sprocket was mounted to the outside. So on this side, okay? So what that led to is that led to being out of alignment from back there, I mean, it was walked way out and I rode it and my son rode it and then it slipped off both times. So what I did is I took off all of these um, binding bolts, the binding screws, and took the whole sprocket and moved it to the inside. So really today I'm just gonna show you what those binding screws look like, because it's super simple. It's literally one, two, three, uh, there's four, five. It was super simple, easy to do. So what these binding screws have, you can see they have a five, let's find it over here, five millimeter Allen, right? That fits in here, okay? See that? And then it has a nut on this side. So these are a binding screw, binding bolt, that work really well. It's pretty simple, you just take these binding bolts out all the way around here. Okay, then this part will come right off. You move it to the inside, and then you just reattach these bolts using your, uh, you know, using your Allen wrench, right? So I'll put this one back in. So you can just really put it in the hole back here, and then take your wrench and your Allen key or whatever, and Tighten it up. And they grab in the back too. So. so really that's it. So again, all you do is loosen these up, move this to the back side, and tighten it back up. And that will make your chain all nice and straight. I, it, because it's a widened crank, it still has some outside play to it. But it doesn't come loose at all. Like I've ridden it really hard up and down the road. I mean, you've seen my road where there's a couple of hills and everything. I rode it and my son rode it and we really like didn't have any problems. So I'm confident it'll be good in the future. So the next thing is the gas cap. If you notice, there's no seal in it. What we wanna do is we want to put some kind of a gasket in there. So I have a section of inner tube that'll end up cutting an inner seal for. Anything to mark it. Cutting it really the size of the outside is okay because it has really large threads that you could stuff this in there. The hole, you could try it out. You know, you can always trim it up if needed. 
but and you can get a heavier piece of rubber if you want. But this is a good start. So just like that. I love how coarse threaded these things are. Yep, that fits pretty good. And definitely has a stop right here. So, you know, I may need to double it up. I don't know, but I'll figure it out when I get the engine in. But I could kind of feel it squishing there a little bit. But anyway, we'll see. Another thing is a vent. So this is a type that you put, you know, the little adapter in there. I have to actually uh, to tap and drill out, put the little connector in there, plop this on there. So I'm thinking doing something like that, that way it really breathes well and is okay. Uh, so that's something to look forward to that I think you should get the parts for and then follow along in future videos when I get everything rolling. Okay, so next thing is, is the gas tank. Now, I noticed in other videos of people, sometimes, uh, I mean, this one looks welded really well, but you don't know until, you know, I put fuel in it, right? Um, I don't know where, you know, the back of the gas tank, what kind of, you know, stop it has in here, what kind of, is there something, you know, a plate in there, and then it's welded in here? I don't really know. Um, but, potential leak is something that could happen, right, with any of these fuel tanks. So what I'll do is I'll get this fuel tank liner and I will fill it in here and then I will do the process of basically flipping the bike all different directions and letting it really fill all the seam areas and all of that. So then I know that the gas tank won't leak at all because I've taken the necessary precautions and just not trusted it from the factory. So one mistake I made is when I put the seat on, I wanted, you know, I like seats nice and low. So I put these down here originally. I just thought I'd cover this just to let you guys know. <laughs> so I went to ride it and the seat was like all down like that. So I, <laughs> I felt like I was going to slide right off of it. So I had to raise it up and put it pretty much like you see the pictures on the site and everything. And I had to make it, you know, at the proper level. In the comment section of the assembly video, somebody commented about, hey, Tony, you put the handlebars on backwards, which I was totally aware of. Normally, you know, you see this direction, it would be the other way with the handlebars out front. Uh, I did this because the frame is really long and the seat is really far back there. And I was already stretched, so I thought I would gain myself a couple of inches and I just flipped them around. So the only negative part of it is when the, as you can see, like it has these, oops, sorry, these foam pads on here to hit the frame. So then your handlebars or anything don't, it doesn't ding everything up is it does the handlebar if it's you know extreme hits the frame and then hits it here also so that's you know that's something that i'm willing to deal with so just thought you guys should be aware that i did that on purpose for comfort even though it has a couple of you know extreme turns left and right drawbacks but i don't really care about that i'd rather have the comfort so as I was riding the bike around, really everything, I would say 95% of it was working really well. Just this handful of things, but this is the final thing, right? So what happens is they manufacture the stuff, they ship it over to us. Uh, it's just one of those things. It's not going to be a plug and play. You've got to go in and fine tune, uh, you know, all of the rims, the wheel sets and everything. I mean, unless you're ordering from a high performance you know, manufacturer where they're truing everything. So it's true straight out of the box. Uh, it's just not gonna be the case with this. They're gonna be close, but they're not gonna be perfect. So it's up to you to learn how to do these things because you're already learning how to assemble a whole motorized bike. So uh, truing up your wheels is a skill that you need to gain, okay? So what I'm gonna do is go through a very simple process that I use. And you can see these forks are especially nice for it because you kind of have, you know, little tabs to gauge your progress with. Um, but let me walk you through on how to true this. And then what I'd like you guys to do is, if you have the same problem, is record some videos and put them in the Facebook group. And if you have any questions about how to do this, a lot of people love to do it and will help in and it'll jump in and help you out. So you can see here that it has this tab, you know, or this horseshoe shaped um, bracket that holds the forks together. 
What I do is I take a piece of cardboard and I tape it to the rim. I try to find wherever I think the happy medium is, just right about there, okay? When I find the happy medium, you can see that it'll push it, right? And then it'll release. So I'm gonna spin the tire and whatever seems like the area that's going to the left the most, if you look at the difference between the distance right here versus over here, see how it's close there? Then you move it and it's about equal. See, that's, that's a good indicator spot. So where it starts to get close to is right about, boom, there. So that means all these spokes have to be adjusted, like, you know, six or eight of them. So a good way to think about it is it's gonna have high points, okay? So it's, it's not gonna be one or two spokes, it's gonna be a group of them, okay? So watch, I'll try to put this pretty much in the center and watch here, this distance and there, okay? See how it went really far to that side? And see how it has, there's a point where it starts to, okay, it's centered there. Boom, starts to really creep over there. So that I would say like that's the beginning. We'll do it this way. I'll mark it with some tape. So I would say that's the beginning. And then I would say, okay, so if we go back to center, look between those areas, if we go back. Okay, it started to creep over to the left. Okay. Boom, right there. Now it really went back and it's pretty equal. Okay. So an area of attention, holy smokes, look at this. An area of attention, I'll pull the camera back. An area of attention is, is from here all the way to here. Okay. Look at that spacing. Doing this just so you guys can see, okay? So an area of attention is really from here all the way to here. So that is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, possibly 10 spokes. Yeah, so a lot on average, it seems to be six. Um, so six to ten spokes. So what we'll do is you got to start down here and work your way and get it get the whole thing pulled over that way. Okay, that's what we want to do is get it all pulled over that way. Then your paper that's taped on here will end up making that. That'll you can move that in and make that your gauge to fine tune it. But right now we're just going to rough it. I need to buy one of those fancy spoke tools but what I do is I use I use this guy it works just fine uh, as you can see the spokes on this side are gonna pull it this way the spokes on this side are gonna pull it that way well of course because of where our tape line is that's the part that needs attention you can see that we're gonna start by pulling it we're gonna adjust all of these spokes on this side and you're gonna um, turn them, you know, right. So right gets it tighter. Okay. So I'm going to do pretty much one, one turn on each. Yeah. So pretty much a half rotation. Okay. So as you can see with our tape line, so right there that's pretty centered, we start to creep over. But already it's not as bad as it was. See how that is? It's already getting better. We'll do it again. Let's do another round.
Okay, these middle ones, I'm gonna give them an extra turn because they were, you know, really out of whack. Okay, let's look again. Check it out. Oh, it's already getting better. Ooh, let me change the, check this out. Okay, center. I move the bike. Okay, so from the start of our tape, it's pretty even. So that did the trick for the most part. It's got a little bit. The bike's moving a little bit, so it's kind of fooling us as far as the camera goes. But overall, that's a really good start. So I'm gonna leave that alone because that improved it. So see how simple that was by identifying the beginning of you know the curve and the end of the curve, just like, right? So you have the beginning of the curve to the end of the curve and do tape like this if this really helps you, okay? Because that really helped me visualize exactly which spokes to adjust. Uh, and I mean, we just did that in like a couple of minutes. So if you're struggling with, you know, getting everything straight, then this is how you do it. And then when you go in and you do the whole entire rim and it looks all nice and centered, then you can put the tape on and a little piece of cardboard on. You can do it on both sides and really true it up and get everything and then really feel the tension of your spokes. And then you'll be good to go. This will give you a lot safer ride than what you would if it was doing that, right? Because <laughs> that's dangerous, especially when you start building a bike with an engine on it and all the higher speeds. So really that's it. I think after some of these things are done, the bike's gonna be really ready for an engine, which I'm excited about because we've got all kinds of things coming up in uh, comparisons of different gears and exhaust and all that stuff that we're gonna do. So look out for it, it's gonna be cool. So like, subscribe, uh, comment below any questions or insight that you have, experience that you have, because a lot of you have been doing this a lot longer than I have, and I'm learning stuff all the time. Like, even the other day, uh, somebody said, use red and tacky grease, and I was like, oh, okay, so I went and picked some up. It's pretty nice. Um, so I appreciate that. I appreciate comments and, you know, helpful tips like that, That because that's what we're all here for, is to help each other to do better. So, uh, look out, you know, like if you got an F-Zero, do all this stuff, make sure it's fine tuned and ready for your engine, but look out in future videos. We've got all kinds of performance upgrades coming up. I'm excited. Let's roll.